Lovely welcome to this new Chinky transmission today with the 18th Chinky and this Chinky is um, as also the 46th Chinky in the codon ring of Meta and we go through like this process the last two weeks and we go another two weeks uh, about to that process because there are four Chinkies in this uh, codon ring of Meta and it's a very important one because it is about the seven um, year circles we go through when we are a child, a children and um, in the puberty, puberty and also as a young adult. And uh, those are very important for our conditioning, for our belief systems, what we believe into the world and what we not believe. So that's why this is so important. And the 18th Chinky is the one for the third seven year cycle and it starts from 15 to 21. And it's the shadow of judgment, the gift of integrity and the city of perfection. And it's really about um, the mind, judgment from the mind. So it's also um, written here, um, the healing power of the mind. When you are interested in watching more of these videos, by the way, you can check in the description. I put a playlist in there uh, with all of the transmissions I do for Chinkies. And soon there will be all the 64 available in that playlist. So you can check exactly uh, which ones um, yeah, you, you kind of resonate and feel to have a deeper look into. As always, I check um, extracts from the book bring my own personal experiences in and talk about limiting beliefs and how they hold us back from the life we are truly yeah, kind of um, need to live from a higher perspective but we are not able to do it now because our physical mind and limiting beliefs stop us from living this dream life. So this chinky has the programming partner is the 17th chinky which is the city of omniscience um, i also put the details here and as i already told it's also the ring of meta and that means there is the um, 46 chinky in which i did the last week the transmission but just uploaded um, also today or yesterday and then we have this chinky and the 48 chinky and the um, 57 57 and um, 48 is a wisdom and um, clarity as the civic level. So let's uh, right go into the shadow, judgment, the victim mind. Built into the human uh, genetic matrix is a deep sensitivity to imperfection. And it is this sensitivity that gives rise to the human qualities of criticism and judgment. As we shall see, the 18th Shinki and its theme of judgment and integrity can have an either empowering or disempowering effect on you and on others. So it's really about how to judge. Because, as you will notice, there is no way to not judge. You will, you will see more while I'm reading here and talking about this. Because we always... In some sense, there is a comparison always going on and the judgment, it just depends on the way how we judge it. So the 18th shadow begins in your childhood. It has a built-in need to challenge authority and the first real authority in your life is your parents. Challenging our parents is a fundamentally healthy thing to do as it is a part of our innate urge to become differentiated. This process begins to earnest as we enter our third seven year cycle and roughly spans from the age of 14 to 21. This stage of our development primarily concerns the growth and expansion of our mental faculties and it is during this period that our future opinions are laid down and our capacity to judge is tested and forged. So it's really about this judgments. They are, they are really complex because <laughs> we are always in a way able to, uh, 
to blame others and to say like, ah, look, you judge me again, um, even if it's something impersonal and objectively and it's meant to empower and not to disempower. However, if you are so deeply in this victim mind, um, you feel attacked all the time, you feel inferior or you feel superior, um, which are the reactive and uh, um, repressive natures um, of this chinky, uh, which we will tap in later. And yeah, that's how it's working with the judgments. So the 18th shadow gives rise to a collective phenomenon in the world known as the victim mind. The victim mind is a conglomeration of all the undermining judgmental thought patterns throughout the world. So it's really collectively, that's what we have to understand. We, it's kind of like you pick it up like fruits on a tree. You pick this, there's an, an apple, the apple might symbolize like, oh, I'm too small. And then you pick up a pear or a banana and the banana may be like, oh, I'm too sick and others are better than me. It's so many judgments and it's really important to know which kind of thoughts and constructs we identify with. This is the most important. So um, in other words, you are allowing your um, mind to be influenced by the collective negative thought patterns of the whole of humanity. The true import of this last statement can come as a huge shock to many people. The true, I think it's important, it's a mystic in the book. Again, uh, the true importance of this last statement can come as a huge shock to many people. I don't think import is a word there in this context. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> the world of the victim mind is an inner world of gossip, complaining and worrying. That's really the mix. And so ask yourself in which aspects of your life you are gossiping about yourself and others, complaining about yourself and others or worrying about yourself and others. And when it's done in a low frequency wipe of this three, you are not able to get to a more stable frequency and, and allowing to heal and yourself and others and also empower and inspire yourself and others. And that's like very important. So ironically, it is exactly this kind of thinking that keeps us from being abundant in terms of both our wealth and health. You may think it is absolutely human to complain, but it creates a negative frequency in the human aura of both the complainer and the victim. In other words, the more you complain, the more you damage yourself and the world. That is important to understand that we really uh, we damage not only ourselves, we damage the whole, the world also by our identifying with thoughts and not clearing them out and getting more of the, the negative energy into the same, um, same funnel of energy. We talk about being non-judgmental as though it were one of the highest goals in life. In fact, it is impossible to not judge because judgment is the way in which the human mind thinks. What defines the low frequency of the victim mind is that you identify with what you think. In other words, your judgments define your identity and make you feel more secure. Exactly what I at the beginning just told that we can never not judge because that's the way our mind functions, physical mind. And so it's important to know that and to see that we use it as a tool set and not being controlled and uh, overpowered by our mind. That's what happens around the world so much, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> sadly or not, it's all, uh, um, it's all a point of perspective for sure. And I noticed while doing this transmission that it's a hard one because it's really also one that uh, I see there's really contemplation going on for me over the years and also still now. And so I'm doing also these videos because um, I just want to learn more about myself and study. And this is just 
for me the most efficient way to do it to help also others while studying myself and to just give like both um, parts something and that's why i love to do like um yeah the chinkies and, and other things like my blog and yeah all judgments is rooted in opinion and vice versa the more you think you are your opinions the more you have to defend them whereas the more lightly they are held the less attached you will be you will be to being right this 18th shadow is about needing to be right it takes a loosening and a lightening of your identity to let go of your need to be right very important there to get the ego the 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 proud being proud um, having to know everything to get this out of this um, equation if this chinky is a part of your hologenetic profile then the most important question to ask yourself is would i be rather right or happy very important question would you be rather right or happy when you have this in your profile or maybe also not i think this is also in general a very good question to ask ourselves because a lot of times we see in our society i say especially i lived in the culture of germany and i know germans i know german cultures and there is kind of this um, i would say there is like more in a way judgments and blames to this degree what's written here that we kind of uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, that we always find the small bad parts, even in the in the good big, and we we, we identify with the small back, uh, bad part. For example, if if we eat a cake and we the cake is awesome, but there is one small part in the cake that uh, Germans don't like. Maybe there's on top bananas, and the bananas are a bit black, and that person doesn't like black bananas, but they are still maybe good. And then like the people, uh, the Germans focus, <laughs> they tend to focus on these bananas and they're like, oh, this banana, so can they not do it better? They have to make them more fresh. And so all of this is this, this low frequency vibes that, that are not helping um, any person to, to be better in their life and to be happy. So is really the question, you want to be right or happy? So and the only thing that matters is how seriously you take your own judgments that's the point because when you take life with life lightness and playful instead of serious serious uh, is the from a chinky 46 what we had the last days which is also in this um, codon ring of matter and the shadow is seriousness and so seriousness and judgment they reinforce each other so we take our judgments very serious and that can be very dangerous because we go into a trap where we are not happy even if your judgment feels positive to you the chances are it will still be misread by others just because you hold it so tightly nothing more to add i guess the victim mind can fixate on the tiniest and most irrelevant details in life what I just kind of told with the German example. The key to raising the frequency of the 18th shadow lies in the perspective that everything external in your life is a mirror of an internal process seeking resolution. One of the key most important insights from the whole work and also my philosophy and, and not only philosophy, my experiences in life. And uh, that's really it. It's really from the inside, like um, inner world, outer reflection. That's how it's working. This is why the highest aspect of the 18th Chinky is perfection, because life is continually offering you a pathway to the realization of your own perfection. And the secret of this shadow is the gradual realization that your outer life is your greater body. The more deeply you accept uh, responsibility for this, the less personally you take life and the easier it becomes. So it's really like everything what we have in our environment, um, 
we know to a great extent has to do with us. There are beings that say everything has to do with us. Even when um, I quote some people say this, like even when people get raped, when children die, a lot of people ask, okay, why does like that person have choose this experience to make? Because it's it's really hard to understand. Why, for example, some mothers have to lose their children when they are very young or their babies or something like that. And it's really um, hard to understand. Um, and only our heart and our higher mind and um, we can only understand it with true compassion that we as souls, as infinite beings, we, we choose to make experiences uh, that um, help us and others so why would we want to experience to be raped or um, die when we are a baby this is two subjects that are insanely um, I don't <laughs> I hope this is okay to talk about this because it's some serious topics that people also get triggered a lot that's why I bring it up here because we have to understand that from our perspective which is the human perspective, which is the physical mind's perspective, there is good and bad. And we see these examples as the extremes, extremes of bad, where something happened, we cannot understand why uh, this happened. And so, and from a higher perspective, this is neutral. This is like some learning process still in a neutral space. And we have to understand that we cannot judge like even um, abusers uh, that um, that rape someone in a way normally we would do um, because we say like look it's a bad person and we are emotional by it and we get aggressive and we go crazy and tell like oh my god this guy is insane he has to go to prison and do this and that and that or um, earlier in history like a lot of people got killed that or got hanged or whatsoever or burned that did something bad where, where society was sure it's something bad and we have to reinvent how to deal with people that are mentally ill or have mentally really really uh, deep problems and so um, this is not a topic it's written in the book however I feel it has a really deep relevance to this chinky and to society as a whole. So that's why I bring up this um, this intense topic and um, write in the comments what you think about this because it's so important. And for me, I believe if we would find something to help people that are mentally ill to understand a bit more slowly what they were doing to make them uh, teach and guide to find themselves and to heal their inner self and inner, make the inner work uh, when it's possible from for sure from the physical mind then this is something beneficial and, and uh, uh, for, for me it's strange that people go to prison and uh, but most of them will not kind of understand what they did and it's kind of like um, they, they will not so much work on themselves like the, somehow the, the structures is not so built up for that yet and then, yeah, maybe there will be some really big breakthrough and change about this in the upcoming decades. Whew, now I did some <laughs> spontaneous going somewhere totally different. However, as I told, write in the comments how you think about this crazy topic. So, repressive nature is here inferiority. The repressive side of the 18th shadow is about feeling inferior. This pattern first develops through our relationship with our parents, particularly during our teen years. If our parents judge us, us too harshly during these formative years, a pattern of self-judgment sets in. If you are one of these people, then your pattern is to turn judgment in on yourself. All judgment is based on comparison and with self-judgment you compare yourself unfavorably to someone who you consider to be above you. That is the problem that when we judge others and 
they tell like oh i think you just think you're better then this is like this inferior um, judgmental ways just the two poles the reactive nature is superiority is like when we project it out we say like oh look uh, i feel i'm higher than you in a way the reactive side of the um, shadow manifests as judgment of others based on feeling superior it occurs when our parents do not maintain strong enough boundaries around us and st instead fall victim to their own self-judgments the urge to challenge then becomes cemented by an unconscious anger in the child that the parents were not strong enough to maintain their integrity this translates in the teen's life to have a deep disrespect for authority and the belief that one is somehow above it. Very interesting. I feel whew, by doing this shadow, oh, it really tracks me a bit in, in tiredness. I will not cut this out because, I mean, it's a life transmission and this is a, a heavy chinky to say. And... I, I also know why it's hard for me to make some of the transmission and I also want to keep it um, um, authentic because it's not like I just tell you some theoretical shit here that is not for you to, to work in this world. It's really something to be able to change your life. And you see, it can really get people into different states and it can make you understand where you have some tendencies to uh, yeah, to have some healing, some potential for more consciousness, for more happiness, for more energy and everything like that. <sighs> so let's make a short pause and go into uh, the gift of integrity. Taking on the world. The 18th Shinki is psychologically extremely profound. It is actually the basic basis of psychology because it holds the keys to human conditioning from the moment a child is born an innate urge inside its dna begins to explore the boundaries of its environment this chinky is about the material emotional and mental boundaries that you meet throughout your life because we are biologically imprinted in seven year cycles it is imp it is possible to say that we have not fully incarnated our lives until the age of 21 which is something interesting to contemplate and to just think about if you did not hear about this so the three phases physical emotional and mental are governed by the um, three chinkies the um, 46 chinky the 48 chinky and the 18th chinky um, whereas the 57 Shinki lays down uh, the even deeper seeds of these three phases through the three, three trimesters during gestation. Like when, uh, yeah, <laughs> when you're still in the belly of your mother, you still, uh, you're st already in the environment of your mother, right? You are connected to your mother, right? So you will also interact with your environment of your mother, right? And that is something very important to know because a lot of people, um, don't want to talk about this important subject that it's not like that we just conditioned from zero to seven we start to condition a lot earlier and that is very important to know and it's also very very uh, yeah it's very special and and deep sacred healing uh, work to do those this con uh, ring is a, of huge importance at the development level as it governs the very infrastructure of our physical, emotional and mental health. The patterns that emerge in uh, this third cycle of your life are dependent on what happened in the earlier two cycles. If, for example, your parents split up during the middle of the second phase, then the same pattern of upheaval will appear in your life in the middle of your third circle, uh, cycle. But this time it will have a mental focus rather than an emotional one. I love this one to contemplate myself because this is amazing. This is fantastic. That means like when in the emotional circle, which is from 8 to 14 or 8 to, yeah, 8 to 14. And let's say when you are 9, 
um, you had some event, some emotional event with nine years old, that means in the first or after the first year of the mental, at the age of 15, you have a similar pattern popping up, but this time it's a mental and not emotional. And so you can just by this, you can check back what you have now, in which circle you are in now, cycle kind of, and you can track some things back like that. And this is really fun to do. The secret of the gift of integrity is to be able to hold your own space without reacting to your judgments or self judgments So it's like to keep a distance onto yourself. If parents truly understood how crucial their role is during this phase in their child's life, they might act with less judgment and feel much surer of themselves. Integrity as a vibration means far more than just holding fast to your values. It is actually a word often used by architects or engineers, engineers to describe the strengths of material um, structures. Integrity is a deeply physical attribute and is actually a function of your immune system in maintaining the tensile strengths within your body. So that's why for me making this transmission, uh, transmission today, I really feel it physically. It's immune system. I, I actually start to have some physical smaller problems within my um, teeth and my skin. And this also popped up like just some days ago. And it's very interesting to now that I just read this and I say like, ah, look, it's connected to that. And now it's written here that it's really about the immune system and maintaining. And, and I see like uh, there's still some struggle for me in that sense. And it is, it's really great to contemplate. And so check for yourself in which ways this works, because it's really working. It's insane. Integrity is born into the human vehicle, but it also has to be earned whether during the teen years or later in your life. Depending on how your um, parents were able to give you the harmony and the trust to be uh, grown up in this mind level health or not. And if not, you have to work on it afterwards, which are uh, um, yeah, most most people are like that. When you are free from the trap of the victim mind, your judgment becomes integrity. The arch enemy of the victim mind. It is the same energy, the same archetype, but experienced from a higher level of consciousness. The gift of integrity is about demanding and maintaining a higher standard in everything you do. As a fully healed adult, your purpose is to help others complete their childhoods so that they can finally enjoy their lives and pass on their integrity to their children. To uphold integrity, you have to be courageous. You have to challenge anything and anyone who does not meet your high standards. To live with integrity is to take on the whole world, to challenge it to meet the high standards you are setting. Wherever you see someone living with integrity, you are seeing someone using the power of judgment in an objective and impersonal way. And that's the point. It's still using judgment, but in an impersonal way, an objective objective way. And for me, it's important um, how to notice that it's it's not putting something on others. It's not uh, uh, emotionally hurting others, and uh, which is often happen like that. So this is the great gift of the agents, Shinki, not to use or judge, uh, take judgment personally, but to learn to judge from your heart. Judgment from the heart can never be cruel because true integrity has only one purpose: to serve the whole in the spirit of truth and compassion. So great. And let's go. Oh, this is really an insane chinky today. This, the first one, I mean, I did two recordings today, but this is the first one. I really feel like whew, my body is working on that transmission. It's insane. Um, let's go to the city, which is, um, I have to shortly re 
change my place here a bit, is um, the city of uh, perfection, which is uh, the Bodhisattva. And the 18th city, sh sh city or <laughs> what's going on today? <laughs> the 18th city shows us how to heal our mental anguish and assume our true place in the universe as whole adults. It does this through tireless, compassionate service to the vision of perfection. When you put your integrity in service to the whole, an amazing thing happens. You become more and more dissatisfied. This is really insane. You become more dissatisfied. Uh, listen and, and, uh, and, and listen exactly to what I say now. The more, because it's like this, the more good you do, the more you realize how much more you could do. This is known as the dis divine dissatisfaction. Because wherever you look, you see how the world could be improved. As you become more and more anchored in your integrity, you aim higher and higher in your service. Perfection is the highest vision a human being can aim for. And you do begin to aim for this highest of ideals. Um, ideals. Not for yourself, but for the sake of the world. So that means because you are more aware of the problems and the troubles of the world, you see them and you see like, oh, I could do this and that and that. And you have so many things and you think like, oh my God, there's actually, um, the more aware I get, the more of the problems I see and I feel like actually it's getting worse. And this is like this funny part about the city, city state when you come closer to that. That you you are tracked fucking back to the shadow. <laughs> this is the first time I, I use this word. I know like a lot of, lot of people use fucking like in um, in American language. Um, probably I will put this out. But like if you know Gary Vaynerchuk and other other people, like they just they just it's just normal in American language sometimes to use it, and it's also not mean by um, sexual things, I guess. So, <laughs> oh, this transmission is crazy. The 18th city contains some profound paradoxes. Living in a state of perfection entails the death of the mind, and as such, perfection is, uh, perfection is an ending. When you realize perfection, evolution ends. Fine, and then what to do? No idea. The Bodhisattva is a being who forgoes his or her highest state of consciousness in order to stay in the world and help others attain that state. So that is the, um, the purpose. Even though um, um, human being or let's uh, Bodhisattva, like for example the Buddha, the Christ, um, Yeshua, um, they are like the embodiment of um, or like also Krishna, uh, Moses and a lot other of these higher beings that were embodying here and in the body and um, yeah, they just help to uh, to integrate others to un get a better understanding. So even though uh, a human may attain a state of perfection beyond all human understandings, <clears throat> the body is still a part of humanity and as long as there are still wounds, wounds in the world, almost nobody can experience perfect health. In other words, perf perfect health cannot occur unless the whole is hurled. This is why the Siddic states of consciousness still have a purpose in the world. They reflect the state of inner perfection to all humanity so that in time we will recreate that state in the outer world as well. The 18th city will also one day bring a new science of mental healing into the world. This science will be built upon the understanding that the mind is an energy field existing on its own plane. Something very important. I understand this also just recently that physical body with my um, faculties like the physical body with the immune system with the cells with the structures is a uh, one body then the emotional and the mental body they are <laughs> they are totally different uh, on different reality levels it's like a parallel uh, uni universe in a way or a parallel reality where emotions and um, mental things occur and that explains a lot for me in my life because I never had good access to emotions um, I was identified with my mental level um, for a long time in my life and that created all of the, the emotional struggles and the um, physical struggles also in my life 
and that um, it's really separate from each other um, that makes a lot of sense for me in my experiences what I had and it helps me to have a better understanding so this I love it I love this um, part of the book so the 18th city is not often seen in the world today it involves the incarnation of an archetype of perfection such people are tireless in the service they give to humanity paradoxically they know through personal spiritual experiences that the world is perfect exactly as it is there's nothing about the world that need to be improved all beings within the Cidic state share this dilemma of having completed their inner evolution yet find themselves still living in the world the physical vehicle is completely changes its programming um, after entering the highest Cidic state of enlightenment if the 18th chinky is activated within your uh, hologenetic profile then you will continue to lead humanity towards perfection in any and every way you can conceive of such people are often called saints and it is really like um, special to talk about this about perfection about about this codon ring of matter that is um, a very interesting transmission and I hope that this was able to give you a little bit more bright light and especially today <laughs> probably you could feel like I also go through emotional <sighs> and mental parts and and have deep um, yeah contemplation for myself and so let's end this with the last part of this transmission as we will all one day see the end of the story also happens to be the beginning of our universal life so by that from richard rudd thank you very much for writing this book thank you for listening to this thumbs up when you like this video and the content check out in the description for the playlist of this all of the chinkies and more i did also a blog article um, big one for chinkies you can check uh, how to start with chinky and what to do there else and uh, uh, let us subscribe here when you like this content and you want to have more of that thank you very much you're dominic and uh, see you next time bye bye